This video was produced by the UCD Math Support Centre in conjunction with the UCD Access Centre. Our next concurrency to look at is the Ortho Centre. So the Ortho Centre is the point of intersection of the altitudes of a triangle. Now, an altitude of a triangle is a perpendicular line from a vertex to its opposite side. So in the case of the centroid we had to find our medians which were lines that connected a vertex to the opposite midpoint. So lines such as this one here are our medians but they need not be connected at right angles. So that doesn't have to be a right angle there. In the case of the orthocenter, the lines must go from one vertex to the opposite side, but it has to be at right angles. So you'll see, for example, here, from this vertex, Perpendicular to the opposite side is just a straight line down. And you'll see that this does not connect to the midpoint of this line because these two, these two lengths here and here are different. This length is bigger than this length here. So that point there is not the midpoint. It's not the midpoint. It's at right angles. And once again, we're going to have to find a couple of these altitudes so that we can find their point of intersection to get us our orthocenter. So we'll take a look at an example of doing that now. So we're asked to find the orthocenter of a triangle with vertices at 2, 2, 4, 1, and 1, 5. So again, we're going to have to find the equation of two of these altitudes. So we're going to need a point on the line, and we're going to need the slope. So a point on the line, well, we can see that each of these lines here, here, and here, goes through one of these vertices. So we can take one vertex, and the slope of this line, we said, is perpendicular to the slope of the opposite side. So if we get the slope between, say, this point here and this point here, and find the perpendicular slope, that'll give us the slope of this line here. Then we have our slope, we have our point, we can find the equation of the line, do this again for, say, this line here, and we'll be able to find two equations. Using some of these equations, we can find their point of intersection. So down here, what we do is I've first taken the two points 4, 1 and 1, 5, so these two points here, and I work out the slope in between them. So the slope in between those two points, using our slope formula, our y2 is 5, our y1 is 1, our x2 is 1, our x1 is 4. We get a slope of minus 4 over 3, but we want the line perpendicular to this. So if we flip this fraction and change that sign from a plus to a minus, we end up with our perpendicular slope of 3 over 4. Next, and this is the very crucial part, is when we go to find the equation of our altitude, the point we take must be the point that we did not use up here. So you'll see I use the two points 4, 1 and 1, 5. So the point on the line is the other vertex 2, 2 in this case. So this 
vertex here is point on first altitude. Of course, you could take any, these points in any order you like. You just have to be careful that the point you choose when getting the equation of the line is the point you did not use when you were finding out the perpendicular slope. So get so then we have our slope is 3 over 4, we have a point on our line. So filling in to the formula y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. Expanding our brackets and simplifying down, we have an equation 3x minus 4y plus 2 equals 0. And that's the equation of one of our altitudes. Next, we have to find another altitude, so I take a slightly different order of points. Instead, I take the points 1, 5 and 2, 2, and I get the slope in between those two points using our slope formula again. Filling in our relevant values, we get a slope of minus 3 over 1, or just minus 3. To get the perpendicular slope, I flip that fraction, which gives me minus 1 third. I change the sign to get plus a third as my slope here. Then the point we choose when getting the equation of the line is the point we didn't use up here. So the point we didn't use in this case was 4, 1. Our slope is a third, we just worked out. So we fill in our formula again with our y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Simplify our equation again and we get the equation for our second altitude, x minus 3y minus 1 equals 0. And at this point, you can stop. You don't have to find the third altitude unless you're asked, because when we're doing our simultaneous equations, we only have unknowns x and y. So we only need two equations to find two unknowns. So, we write down the two equations we found, 3x minus 4y plus 2 equals 0, x minus 3y e minus 1 equals 0. So, if we multiply our second equation by 3, we get the equation 3x minus 9y minus 1 equals 0. But to get cancellation to occur, I change the signs. So this, minus, this plus becomes a minus, that minus became a plus, and a minus became a plus here. So our x's cancel, leaving us with just minus 4y plus 9y is 5y, plus 2 plus 3 is plus 5, equals 0. Then we just have to rearrange to get y's on one side, constants on the other, divide both sides by 5, and we get y is minus 1. Then what we can do is we can take one of our equations, say this first one, take our y value and substitute it in here for our y, and when we simplify that down, we just get that x is equal to minus 2. So we had y is equal to minus 1, x is minus 2, so our ortho center is at the point minus 2, minus 1. One thing to note is that there is a line called Euler's line, or Euler's line, which is the straight line that contains the centroid, the circumcenter, and the ortho center. And lastly, there is a fourth concurrency called the in-center. Which is the point of intersection of the bisectors of the angles of a triangle. So if we bisected these angles, where this angle is the same as this angle, This angle is the same as this angle.
and this angle is the same as this angle, the point of intersection of those lines is the in center of a triangle. But finding the bisector of an angle like this, and hence finding the in center, is not covered on the coordinate geometry section of the syllabus. But just to be aware that the in center is there, and you'll have seen it in your geometry course where you have to draw them, but you do not have to find the in center like you do the other three.